Welcome to the Immigration.ca live stream series. Today we're going to be discussing some latest developments in immigration news. Since our last live stream, there's actually been two express entry draws. We're also going to be discussing the U.S. Immigration Ban Executive Order. My name is Andrea, and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca. If you're interested in reading further into anything that we're discussing today, please go to the news section of our website, Immigration.ca. Well, Colin, yesterday, February 8th, there was another express entry draw. And this was the lowest CRS score, as well as the most invitations to apply. It's uh, becoming a, a, a topic now as, as Canada is moving forward to bringing in uh, a number of highly skilled individuals under the express entry system. Uh, we're seeing uh, scores falling week by week. It was the sixth draw since the government made uh, substantive changes, which was done on November 19th. We spoke about this before. And these changes are having an effect uh, of, uh, in a, of lowering the score uh, as people are getting points for working in Canada, as people are getting points for studying in Canada. Those who study one year get uh, 15 points. Mm -hmm. Those who have completed a three-year degree will receive 30 points. Okay. Individuals who are working in Canada are going to receive 50 points, the majority of them, and highly, uh, high executives are going to receive 200. So the, the, the CRS scores are falling, and we expect this to continue. And for the next six months, or the first half of this year, what can we expect? We're, we're seeing, and it's not unofficial, you won't find this anywhere, but we've done the calculations, and we're looking somewhere between 12 to 15 draws. This seems to be uh, the indicators of what the government is trying to do. We're, we're obviously not able to base ourselves on any empirical evidence, but it's just a, a guesstimate okay. that the government is looking to conduct somewhere in the range of 12 to 15 draws by June 30th. And at that point, we're, we might see 30,000 invitations issued uh, under these draws. So this, this is something that's a, a developing uh, storyline in the Canadian immigration industry. A lot of practitioners are, are checking this out and uh, we'll, we'll look for the next two weeks and see what happens on the next draw. Great, I mean, because there are quotas that need to be met for, for immigration to Canada. Well, well this is it. Uh, the government, again, has to bring in uh, 72,500 uh, skilled workers okay. under the economic class. So, so it's economic class 72,700 uh, in this uh, current calendar year. In order to do that, uh, there are issues that relate to whether people actually go through with an application. Uh, it takes time for people to perfect an application, so there's a big drop-off rate. So it's a question of finding the right balance between the number of invitations issued and how does that translate into an individual becoming a permanent resident. Okay. So in order to receive uh, 72,700, the, uh, that, that's a total number of individuals, that's not in, in invitations, mm -hmm. uh, that, that translates into somewhere in the range of 50,000, 40,000, 50,000 invitations. Okay. Uh, perhaps even more because of the very high drop-off rate. We're waiting now uh, for the government's uh, report uh, for 2016. Yep. We're anxiously waiting for that because that might give us a bit more information uh, in terms of who was in the pool how many uh, individuals are applying each week. At one point, it was 1,500 a week. Wow. Uh, we're, we're certainly, uh, I'd like to know, and many practitioners would like to know, uh, what, what, how popular is the Canada Express entry system? Okay. Are they receiving 2,500 applications every week? Uh, so all of these metrics will come to light at some point. Uh, it, it could even be this week, next week. Uh, and uh, this will be a, a, a major uh, empirical uh, element uh, to the whole picture uh, on Canada's express entry system. Okay, so what about employers? What does this mean for employers? Employers still, more so than ever before, uh, you have an interest in obtaining a labor market impact assessment. So if you're not an exempt uh, worker and the employer uh, is not going to benefit from an exemption, right. which, uh, of course, the rule is you need a labor market impact assessment, receiving 50 points is becoming more and more critical. Because as the score is falling from 447 where it is now, we could see it fall further. Mm -hmm. It's hard to predict where it will go. Right. But uh, quite simply, an individual with 400 CRS score, 390, 380, first of all, 
at, at least with an LMIA, you're getting your worker into Canada and working. Right. Uh, obviously, it may not necessarily translate into permanent residence for everyone. Okay. Uh, either they're going to qualify under the express entry system, uh, they're going to perhaps qualify under some of the provincial uh, nominee programs. Right. So it's, 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 it's going to come to a point where a lot of workers will be in Canada uh, and uh, the question is who will uh, qualify for permanent residence and, and over time uh, we're going to see uh, this express entry system uh, juxtapose with the provincial programs and we're going to have a little bit more clarity in the future. So for employers, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it's important that they certainly look for uh, uh, bringing foreign workers in if they need them in, in, in high uh, uh, shortage industries. Uh, the labor market impact will still have a major role to play, surely in bringing in workers for a work permit. Okay. Uh, in terms of retention, long-term retention, the express entry system uh, is currently the largest uh, avenue to consider. Uh, and then hopefully your workers will be able to secure uh, permanent residency status uh, either through this express entry system uh, by receiving 50 points, not having to keep reapplying uh, each year. Uh, there'll be uh, automatic uh, points given for an individual once they've received their first work permit and worked for 12 months. Uh, for those, again, that don't have uh, the uh, transition uh, avenue for express entry, they're going to have to look for the provincial nomination program. Right. And it's going to come to a point where a number of candidates will be on work permits and they just won't make the permanent residence uh, okay. threshold. They won't make it. And that's going to cause, uh, obviously, uh, chatter and, and concern. Uh, so we'll wait until that comes. We're talking about another year or so away before people know. Uh, so how, how does everyone, uh, guys, how, how, how are we, uh, how does this... Sound? Is this, is this going well? T position, everything's good? Yeah, great. As for candidates then, so obviously a lower score is good news for candidates. Well, obviously uh, candidates who are in the low 300s, this is not uh, great news. It, 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 it's hard to say where it's going to fall. Uh, what's important for candidates is that we uh, certainly encourage individuals to find an employer because you certainly have an option for a work permit. That's the very least. From our own perspective, we provide all our clients, whether we're working with an employer uh, and helping them navigate the immigration process, or we're working with an employer and actually uh, per helping out on the recruiting. We have many programs available to employers. Right. But uh, for an individual candidate, every one of our candidates will receive an employment search consulting assistance service. So what does that mean? We are providing candidates with uh, up to a thousand for some candidates, uh, 500 in most situations, we're providing 500 um, employers that are in your industry that we know are uh, potential hiring can uh, employers. So we're, we're, we're certainly trying to help uh, individuals uh, not only in the immigration side, but in the uh, Im very important uh, employment uh, element uh, of the overall um, project to Canada. Perfect. Well, moving on to a highly controversial topic all around the world, and that is the U.S. Immigration Ban Executive Order. So, Colin, what are the basic facts of this ban? Well, as everyone knows, uh, the U.S. administration, uh, President Trump, signed an executive order uh, on January 27, in effect banning immigration from seven majority Muslim countries. Uh, this, was for, uh, this is for a period of 90 days. Uh, the uh, basic elements are the countries involved are Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. Uh, and individuals uh, will be banned with citizenship from those countries from entering the United States until April 27, 2017. The basis for all of this, the government, uh, the United States government wants to uh, undergo an extreme vetting process uh, in, uh, aimed at ensuring the safety uh, of America. Uh, what is interesting is that not one terrorist attack that has ever taken place, that, uh, what, what, what the uh, literature shows, uh, has ever been uh, carried out by a national of any of the seven countries that are being uh, 
uh, affected by this executive order. Uh, the interesting also that this order suspends entirely uh, the U.S. refugee program for 120 days until May 27. Uh, and, and it halts, of course, the processing of, of admission for Syrian uh, individuals uh, and Syrian refugees for an indefinite period until such time as the U.S. president feels that secure measures are in place. That was the general paraphrasing of, of the order. Uh, it also, unfortunately, reduces America's commitment to bringing in refugees. Uh, the threshold numbers in, in the past was 110,000 under the Obama administration, uh, but for 2017 this has been cut down to 50,000. Uh, so, uh, the other interesting development is that this executive order was challenged uh, by a number of, of uh, major uh, parties uh, and groups, and uh, there were certain uh, decisions that came out. There was one in Boston, one in Washington State. The one in Washington State is the one that is right now uh, everyone is looking at, because what it effectively did is there's a judge who issued a restraining, uh, a restraining uh, put a temporary halt on this order, uh, and it prevents the United States from uh, carrying out and implementing uh, this particular uh, overall executive order. Of course, the, the, the administration, the U.S. government, is one important element of the whole judicial process, uh, a very important one. Uh, the Constitution in the United States is also an element uh, of, of judicial uh, uh, making. Uh, and so the, the battle right now, uh, this order that was rendered by a, a, a federal court judge on February 3rd uh, from Washington State, uh, and, and put a, a halt uh, on the implementation of this order. Homeland Security in the United States has, has resumed processing of, of applications, uh, not applications, but has resumed the uh, allowing an admission to the United States of people who had visas from the seven affected countries. Uh, so this, this, this has, in a way, what's, what's happening now is that lawyers uh, appealed for the government. They, 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 they appealed this order uh, of the uh, federal court judge uh, and the appellate court of the Ninth Circuit uh, in uh, Washington State. Uh, the appellate court, uh, comprising of three judges, uh, heard, uh, 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 they, they conducted a hearing on this past Monday. Uh, interestingly enough, that hearing was live streamed mm -hmm. and uh, it was for one hour and both sides uh, presented their arguments. The judges were quite uh, uh, interested, and they raised very uh, interesting uh, questions uh, to the government lawyers, and uh, well, as well as to the attorney general for uh, the state of Washington, uh, as well as the state of Minnesota is is one of the co parties uh, in this appeal. Uh, so uh, this, how, yeah. How long is it going to last? Well, this particular order, uh, the, 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 sorry, the decision uh, of the federal court. Uh, is supposed to be rendered any time. Uh, the judges have indicated their uh, interest in, in rendering a decision as fast as possible okay. without uh, making a specific date. So people are suggesting maybe today will be a day, tomorrow, uh, okay. but sometime uh, very soon. Uh, interesting, yeah. And who is exempt from this order? Well, uh, b before the exemption is that the, the, the legalities of this uh, are, are very uh, interesting because this whole process could take up to a year because regardless of the decision that will be rendered uh, by the uh, appellate court, there will be an appeal and there will be uh, perhaps appeals uh, that continue and, and until the Supreme Court of Canada, I'm sorry, sorry, until the Supreme Court of the United States uh, takes carriage of this entire matter and in, in itself renders a, a decision. So people are saying that this could take up to a year. Okay, now, yeah. how it affects Canada is, is, is another, another issue. Okay, right. So, I mean, as for the people exempt from the order, that includes, um, I mean... We'll, well, the, uh, the order caused chaos uh, because chaos, in a sense, it, it's in, unpredictable in terms of how this order was, was to be uh, implemented. So, in terms of who it doesn't affect, uh, who's exempted, uh, American citizens. Uh, by the way, all of this that we're talking about, this particular uh, writing that we're talking about, 
is on our, our website. Yeah. It was uh, in, in the news section. In, in the immigration uh, news section. Uh, so we're, we're covering uh, an important development, and, and we've put together an FAQ uh, that will address the ongoing developments of this uh, executive order and, and, and how the court's uh, rulings are, are, are coming out. Uh, so initially, you know, obviously those that are exempt uh, are American citizens and green, uh, green card holders. Uh, but initially, green card holders were not exempt, and then they were. Uh, Canadian citizens and permanent residents were supposed to be exempt. Surely Canadian citizens are. But dual citizens? Well, this is it. So if you're a national from one of the seven countries and you're a Canadian citizen, you're exempt, and the U.S. Uh, authorities have confirmed this. But the, the troubling part of all of this is that if you are... Uh, even there's, there's now storylines that came out this week, is that even if you are a Muslim, uh, you are at risk of being denied entry in the U.S. And why is this? Because initially, before the election, the government came out, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the candidate, uh, President Trump, before he was formally uh, elected, uh, he came out with very uh, concrete and, and, and uh, clear statements that uh, he believed that there should be a ban on, on all Muslims coming to the States. Uh, the former mayor of New York, uh, Giuliani, uh, also uh, went on record publicly. Uh, so uh, confirming uh, this discussion uh, where the government of the United States uh, is, is, their interest is to ban Muslim immigration. So it's very, it's now in the, in the spotlight that the, the overall intention of this executive order, although it is now being argued that it's not a Muslim ban, uh, we're seeing, uh, surely we have, uh, there is uh, indications uh, quite in the, uh, clearly in the public record that it really is a ban on, on Muslims. Uh, and, and though even though Canadian citizens, who are not even dual nationals of one of the seven affected countries, this week alone, you had a, a Canadian citizen, uh, from formerly from Morocco, who was uh, trying to cross into the United States uh, through the Phillipsburg, uh, okay. Vermont border, okay. and was denied entry after uh, having gone through a process uh, of interrogation, uh, apparently four hours. Uh, the, the facts are such that it seems that she went through and her family. Uh, so what seems to be happening is it's, it's, an, it's being uh, the, the evolution of this whole storyline is that if you're a Muslim, uh, regardless of your nationality, uh, you risk uh, coming from the States, uh, coming from Canada, going into the States, for example, uh, you are at risk of being denied entry. This is, this is the unpredictable side of things. Uh, so in terms of the number of, of individuals in Canada, uh, from the seven countries, the largest uh, number of people who have Canadian citizenship are Iranian nationals. Uh, second are uh, in the nationals from Iraq. Uh, so there's approximately, each year uh, in 2014, uh, approximately 9,500 Iranian nationals became citizens. Uh, then you had another, in 2015, another 9,000 Iranian nationals became Canadian citizens. Uh, till the end of September 2016, uh, you had another approximately 3,500. All told, there's approximately 70,000 uh, Canadians who are uh, dual nationals of one of the seven countries uh, and holding Canadian citizenship. So, in theory, the assurances have been that you're not affected by the ban. Right. Uh, but even while this executive order has been suspended, uh, pursuant to a court order, and even though clarification has been received by the Canadian authorities that it, uh, it, they're, they're, they're streamlining the application of this executive order, of course they're supposed to suspend it, its application, you have a vetting process that's taking place, which one of my colleagues uh, in the field has, has uh, uh, harshly criticized uh, and, and called the, the actual entire uh, order is, is cruel, is, is what one of my colleagues, from the perspective as it affects refugees. Uh, because uh, the, the, the overall uh, ambit of this executive order uh, is that it's uh, uh, unconstitutional, uh, that it uh, doesn't, uh, although the powers of the president are very large to 
protect the borders of the United States, there is this constitutional issue that uh, lawyers for government are going to uh, try to raise that the intention of, of government was to uh, ban Muslims. And, and there's other uh, subtlety, subtleties that are being raised. So from the Canadian perspective, we have about 70,000 dual nationals. Uh, of course, if you're a diplomat, you're supposed to be exempt. If you're, uh, you know, if you have special immigrant status, that's on a case-by-case -case basis, you're exempt. Interestingly, diplomats are supposed to be exempt. And the, the irony of this is that uh, a former prime minister of Norway was, was prevented entry for a, a, during a four-hour period, uh, entering into Dulles, uh, Washington Dulles Airport. Uh, and he was uh, attempting to attend uh, a breakfast uh, sponsored by the Trump administration. Uh, this individual, uh, former prime minister of Norway, uh, was denied entry, well, not formally denied, but interrogated for four hours before he was admitted into the U.S. Uh, on the basis that he had an Iranian visa. So he had been. Okay. The, the, the overall picture is this entire storyline is ongoing. The uh, government uh, positions are, are going to be hopefully uh, developed and, and clarified, but it's going to take a long time, and it's clear that you can't predict uh, who will be caught in the net of this Muslim ban. Really, that's, well, let's call it what it is it's a Muslim ban. So, so you, have, you have Canadians who have Nexus cards. Right, so what happens if. What if, what if a Canadian person has a Nexus card? How does that affect them? So the Nexus card was, uh, it's, a, it, it's a, a high security document that's been, uh, allows, uh, for example, Canadians uh, to uh, go into the U.S. It's, you're already pre-screened. You're already uh, pre-cleared in a sense that you've gone through uh, security. What the U.S. government did was they revoked a number of Nexus cards. Uh, the Canadian authorities, uh, uh, Public Safety Minister Ralph Goodale, uh, raised objections that so many of these cards were, these statuses were revoked unilaterally. Uh, clarifications were, were sought, and apparently um, a number of them have been reinstated. Okay. Uh, so this, th this is the, the, the general gist of all of this. It's an unpredictable, it's, it's an unpredictable uh, occurrence that's going to take place. What can you expect? It's, it's one thing that you will read material uh, that is going to clarify that this is the lay of the land. But the truth of the matter is there is no clarity, and you can't predict what a border uh, security individual is going to do. Even if you're, if, if you're a Muslim entering the United States, trying to board, uh, trying to get in from Canada to the U.S., uh, but... But, I mean, you mentioned your colleague's reaction. What's Canada's reaction? So, the, uh, of course, the immigration minister in Canada uh, issued a public statement uh, giving uh, help to individuals who were turning up at Canada's border. Uh, very few people did who were affected by the ban initially. There were just, I'm not even sure if there were a handful of individuals, but Canada reacted in a sense that the prime minister uh, tweeted out uh, a very, uh, it's, 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 it's been tweeted and retweeted a number of times, he wrote, uh, to those fleeing persecution, terror, and war, Canadians welcome you regardless of your faith. Diversity is our strength. Welcome to Canada. Uh, so you've had the prime minister commit a, a, a position. You've had the immigration minister uh, issue um, uh, an operational bulletin that, that confirms Canada's what I call light treatment uh, and light reaction. There's the local level. At the local level, uh, provincial premiers, provincial uh, politicians, uh, municipal politicians uh, have, have gone out uh, unanimously uh, condemning, of course, the order. Uh, you also have individuals uh, uh, from other countries, um, prime ministers and leaders of, of other countries who have unanimously condemned this um, order. Now, what's interesting is that we published on Monday, January 30, yeah. our uh, position, and you can check it on our website, uh, we were the first that I uh, could see that uh, advocated a suspension of Canada's participation in the Canada-U.S. Uh, safe third country agreement. You're seeing a lot of dialogue this week. Uh, you're seeing uh, an interesting report that came out of Harvard University on Wednesday, an excellent report written by four 
uh, Harvard law students, who also advocated. Uh, well, they, they, re they, they summarized the state of, Can uh, of the, um, uh, the safe uh, third country agreement. They uh, summarized the plight of the refugee program in the U.S. Basically, the refugee program in the U.S. is, is no longer such that uh, it, it equally uh, gives protection to refugee claimants in the United States. And from that perspective, uh, it confirms our position that we put out last week that Canada should suspend its participation in this Canada-U.S. safe third uh, country agreement because the U.S. is no longer a safe country uh, as it was when this agreement was put into place uh, in 2004. So uh, we can see ongoing um, uh, calls by uh, people in the industry uh, calling on the government to suspend its participation in this very important agreement, uh, we don't think it's going to take place. We, we don't think that Canada is going to risk uh, alienating uh, itself for uh, the greater good of what it's trying to achieve economically. And that is, uh, you know that the U.S. administration is planning to uh, renegotiate the North American Free Trade Agreement. Yes. So it's very interesting that although Canada would like to uh, perhaps uh, voice a stronger objection, which we feel they should. But uh, insiders are suggesting that right now, uh, as the uh, Foreign Minister for Canada is in Washington uh, meeting with uh, the uh, U.S. Secretary of State, uh, that took place this week, I believe yesterday, and there's right now jockeying for position that Canada uh, surely is concerned on how the U.S is going to react uh, in terms of what they want to renegotiate under NAFTA. So from an economic concern, Canada is not going to rock the boat. I don't imagine that our government is going to now vociferously object to the point of suspending uh, this, its participation in this agreement. But for all intents and purposes, if you're a refugee in the United States, and you uh, have uh, either been determined not to be a refugee, and by the way, the refugee system in the U.S. is very harsh. It is now the report that came out from Harvard University this week highlights the uh, it pre before this order came out. They, it's it's a tough program. It's very harsh and it's 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 cruel uh, in terms of uh, how it treats a refugee claimants, it splits up families, it keeps them in indefinite intention. The Trump administration is planning to uh, make it even tougher, uh, commit uh, more hearings uh, in terms of forcing people uh, to, to uh, incur uh, ongoing hearings. And uh, you have people who can't even file their refugee claim within the one-year time frame in the United States. So what's happening? You're seeing some spill-off effect from this. What you're seeing is that a number of refugees are risking their lives to come to Canada. And they're meeting this uh, fate by trying to enter Canada through unmarked areas, uh, non-border area, non-official border areas. Uh, of course, uh, there's a storyline that's uh, from Manitoba. Uh, there's a small town in, in, in Manitoba w on the U.S. Uh, North Dakota border. And what they're doing is, is risking their lives because the, the, the extreme cold and temperatures that, are, that are, they're facing uh, this past few days so you're having about a, a few hundred refugee claimants who are bypassing the U.S. Uh, refugee process. Uh, so who else is exempt? Uh, I'm sorry, who else is, is commenting? The technology sector. The technology, the, 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 the technology sector is, is also voicing concern in the U.S. Uh, they, they submitted, uh, as, as well as Canada, uh, certainly uh, voicing their objections to the ban uh, because of many individuals uh, from an immigration perspective uh, do uh, bring in great talent and have been part of the technology industry for years, both in Canada and the USA. So you have objections uh, in the United States, surely. You have uh, Canadian universities are also, in terms of how it will affect Canada, of course it's going to affect uh, Canadian universities because they're seeing I mean, they, you know, they need international students. I mean, it's part of the diversity of the university as well. Right, and their numbers are increasing. The, the plan to bring in 
uh, in the next uh, five years going forward. The plan for Canada is to double the uh, foreign student uh, population. Uh, because, of course, uh, immigrants uh, will receive points for having studied in Canada, the universities, the colleges across Canada are now in a position to increase their foreign student enrollment. So all of this, this whole executive order, this whole ban on immigration, uh, this whole discussion line is pushing people, whereas in the past, uh, U.S. was their first choice. Canada was a second choice. Right. You know, it, it was a backup plan. So can they come to Canada then? So that's interesting because, you know, it's not, first of all, if you're American, you can't just come to Canada. Even though you are an, an American citizen, if you are uh, not even affected by the ban, but if you are you're, if you're, uh, very, dis, dis, uh, let's just say that the whole process is distasteful for you and uh, you find it abhorrent, as, as one um, major senator uh, recently said, uh, you can't just come to Canada. Obviously, we have a system. Uh, we have a, 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 a process that individuals have to follow, and uh, it's not easy to come to Canada. Uh, so uh, in terms of the short term, it's not going to give short-term relief. The, the, there's no mechanism in Canada unless you have an employer right. who's going to sponsor you on, on, on a work permit. Right. The legal channels are going to take some time. Uh, so being a U.S. citizen does not automatically mean uh, an entry to Canada. Uh, and, it, you know, the, 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 the short end of the, of the matter is uh, long, long term, Canada will be benefiting in some way, in, in an unkind way, in a sense that individuals will choose Canada as their first choice. Right. Uh, so Canada has raised their, their annual levels to 300,000 for this year, mm -hmm. and we'll see not only will Americans make uh, Canada a, a choice, a destination, uh, but we're going to see individuals, of course, with Muslim backgrounds, uh, Muslim followers, and those individuals are going to look to Canada uh, as a first choice. Perhaps not, you know. We're, we're going to see a push factor uh, on Canada's student population, immigration population. You're going to see this in, in, a, in a wide uh, a wide net, uh, go ahead. What can we so say? We want to go to the United States. What can we expect? So, if you're a, a Canadian, uh, obviously it's not. If you're a Canadian citizen, it's not an issue. Uh, if you are a dual national uh, from one of the banned countries, the fact of the matter is you you've got to uh, prepare to undergo. Even though uh, the uh, channels have been cleared uh, that you should not uh, be affected by this ban, the the reality is. Uh, the front line going into the states, expect long delays. Expect to undergo extreme questioning. Uh, expect that your uh, mobile devices will be opened, will be examined. Your phones, is, it will, the codes have to be on. You, you must uh, present your phone if they are asking you for such. Uh, you need to reveal the codes to your phone and to your mobile devices. Uh, you have to allow the uh, front line uh, at the U.S. to scrutinize uh, who you are and, and who you are communicating with. Uh, so that's, that's unfortunately one of the uh, uh, effects that uh, many Canadians who are even dual national citizens and uh, one of the seven countries. Now, as I mentioned earlier, even if you are not a, a Canadian citizen from one of those, uh, formerly with a nationality from one of the seven countries, uh, if you are a dual national from any country in the world, uh, that has a, a, a Muslim majority, uh, you are at risk uh, to be uh, questioned uh, when you enter the state. So you need to give yourself time and you need to plan accordingly. Okay. So, I mean, you mentioned now there's going to be interest in coming to Canada. How is this going to benefit Canada? Well, in terms of uh, obviously Canadian businesses, universities uh, will, will be able to uh, certainly have, uh, they'll, they'll be sought out to, to uh, sponsor an application to come to Canada, uh, surely the technology sector in Canada is going to benefit because uh, there are new programs coming out very shortly uh, that will uh, facilitate uh, visas to be issued under a very rapid, quick processing time. So if a technology company is pre-approved, 
at, at very shortly within the next, uh, well, when the next budget comes out, the government is planning to release either end of February or early March. There's already discussion that Canada's uh, upcoming budget will include legislation that will uh, deal with a number of revisions, creating a new uh, visa class uh, for technology and other uh, industries uh, who could participate in getting uh, a hold of foreigners uh, and having processing times in, in the range of two weeks. So there's a, a, obviously a, that particular visa category was in discussion long before this executive order was put in place. It's coincidental that Canada is now in a position to um, capitalize in an unfortunate way, but I think we're going to be more and more the first choice for individuals worldwide. Uh, so that's going to put a, a, a strain, uh, obviously, on, on our own resources in Canada. So that uh, seems to be, and of course the universities uh, are going to certainly probably increase their allocations for foreign, foreign students. That in itself is also going to cause controversy to a point that Canadian students are going to find it difficult. Uh, there will be uh, informally uh, less positions for Canadian students. So I think overall it's not just the executive order that we're dealing with, uh, it's, it's just a trend that's taking place in Canada right now uh, that international students are going to take more uh, seats in the theater, as we say. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much. So it's an ongoing story. Right. It's well, developing. Yeah. So, I mean, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter. Check our website, immigration.ca. We'll keep you up to date with the latest developments in this, as well as other immigration news topics. Uh, what about call, What about follow it? Do we want to have anyone... Um, want to give some addresses so follow us like us on Twitter on Instagram. Uh, so immigration CA on Twitter immigration CA on Instagram uh, facebook.com slash immigration GCA. where you are right now uh, uh, YouTube YouTube same thing, same uh, thing? LinkedIn really we like to engage with all of you um, we are quite uh, interested in, in dialoguing. Uh, we do answer most questions. Julius, you're answering, you're answering a lot of questions. Yes, we are answering all the questions and we, we will send the online evaluation link to all the people. Great. So uh, I think that is pretty much uh, sums up for today uh, what we wanted to share with you. So. Please stay t so please do follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Please follow us so you can find out when the next live stream is. If you're interested in watching previous live streams, you can find those on our Facebook page or our YouTube page as well. If you would like to come to Canada, you can always go to our website, immigration.ca, and complete the free online evaluation form. It will, basically, you'll leave your credentials and some information about yourself, and then we'll evaluate you, and we'll get back to you and let you know what your options are. Well, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you in the next live stream. Thanks very much for joining us. Bye for now.